Welcome back. No clue if this is a continuation or the start of a new video. If it's a new video, it's the Ram Revival. You know what we're doing here. Uh, it's Monday after work, 6.30. Got off relatively early. It is a cool breezy. Can we get this to work? <laughs> 100 outside, but check it out. It's only like 92 in here and I've got a breeze coming in. So let me walk you over and show you what we're all right, so late last night, I got these prepped as best I can for the TIG welding. Obviously, uh, if you don't recall, the situation happened with the passenger side. That's the one that's right here where my finger is. We got the collector on that end. The collector it was just out of round. We had to use that Lyle pipe shaper. I've prepped the snot out of it. We made a video on a little air belt sander that was a nightmare. Uh, basically have it in shape, ready to go, everything slip fits, the V-band will go over and love tap in place, which is good enough for me. Got the collector on the driver's side here, and then the driver's side had that primary right here, where a prime well just like sort of skipped over it, <laughs> and uh, that's not good, that would be a terrible exhaust leak. I would venture to guess the vast majority of people that would have got these shipped to them would have thrown this on the truck. Uh, maybe if they actually do paint them or coat them, someone would have noticed it. But uh, to talk about a nightmare to figure that out or to go through the trouble, especially the driver's side header. That's the one that you're going to have more issues with. Uh, to have that one have to come off to be fixed on a brand new part that you waited months for sucks. That said, I'm not bashing pace setter. I like they're made in America. Uh, I like that they're basically the only long tube header that exists for, you know, a 5259 Magnum. I certainly appreciate all that. It just really sucks that this has set me back a bunch of time. Uh, so right there is the rest of the kit, the Y-pipe, everything like that. And if I take you over here, up the truck, up the fender cover, let's go over what we'll be doing and then what we're doing it with. So, super, super nice stainless ceramic coated Gibson shirt. Ignore the radio. Like that's not even part of the truck. Used to be, not anymore. <laughs> they looked awesome. You've seen them on the engine stand. These are the shorties. Uh, I went with them because at the time I didn't think long tubes were going to be necessary and I also didn't know that every single aftermarket option for the factory Y-pipe was anemically undersized and my factory stuff would just swallow it. If you haven't seen those videos, literally I can take my Y-pipe off this truck, being an 01, and it will just engulf the aftermarket. And these are like, not cheap, like not Walker, not the cheapest thing you can get from a parts store, like Magnaflow, stainless mandrel bent stuff. It's the tiny, tiny, like early Magnum stuff. That is not good. That was always the choke point, the weakest link in the exhaust. That's why guys go to yards and rob late model Rams to throw the Y-pipe on, right? So, long story short, that's not gonna happen. Now, the good news, if there's any that comes out of this, is these glorious ceramic-coated Gibsons that I paid a pretty penny for have gone up like two to $300 just since I bought them. So, I don't think we're gonna be out any money if I decide to sell them. Might keep them for another truck. Who knows, maybe we'll wind up like an SST or a uh, Indy truck or a single cab that we like kinda turn into more of like a street strip build. But uh, for all intents and purposes, these have to go in. If you've never dealt with headers on a small block Mopar, and if you're like, man, you know, why did Prime Weld just have welds on that inside of the primary? Why didn't they just do the outside? You know, it should double sided. I'll show you why. It's right there. <laughs> and, uh, if you look at my stainless bolts, you'll know that there's like not really room for a socket. You know, you're like, man, that does look tight. You know, you can come in with a wrench, but I don't know if you could even get a socket there. Well, Kind of depends on the sidewall of your socket. Impact socket's probably not going to fit. Uh, thin walled impact, maybe. Thin chromey, possibly. But uh, it's just, bottom line, it's tight quarters. So those are 5 16 bolts. That means we need half inch stuff to get them out. Uh, so what I have here, just kind of a whole arsenal that'll hopefully take care of us. We've got from that giant massive set, the VHA half inch, went ahead and grabbed ratcheting just in case it can fit anywhere. Got my stubby SK, this is one of the reasons I pulled the triggers for tight confines I've dealt with like this. I still use it, it's still not broken in, this stupid... <laughs> it's great to have a flex set, it's cool that it's locking, but good lord, I still cannot do that without uh, using pliers. 
So uh, Capri 3.8, uh, this will be one of its first forays. I think I'd been using the Tectons prior to this. Uh, coming down here, we got the Koken. That is the 3H drive deep. This is a flex head that will actually function. It's also a much shorter ratchet, as you can tell, than the Matco. Uh, both will hopefully have their place. And then if stuff gets really bad, we've got the Tecton Roto head, and we've got the SK swivel socket. So that's sort of like... Worst case scenario, more than likely we're probably going to have to run a little stubby wrench to be straight up honest with you. So, I don't have a ton of space on this card, so this is literally going to be me sweating my butt off out here. I'm going to try to work until at least like 8.30 or 9 before I go in for supper. Hopefully we can get these off, and then I would like to start dropping these in. The reason, if you're like, hey, if you got to get these welded and you're going to do something to them, right, and I'll just have the paint burn off, what's the deal? I'll tell you right now, the way that collector was out around, the way that weld was missed, this slides together really well, like just here I could assemble it for you, but it's a situation I do not trust it under the truck until I've like seen it. I want to know if it clears, I want to know if there's interference. Also, I would hate to get these coated or painted or whatever cool stuff we may or may not be going to do to them and then have to like bash the ever living snot out of them and ship the coating away. I want to bash them up before we do anything to them so uh, that's kind of the deal and I do want to make sure this fits since I am going v-bands on the ends of the uh, collectors off the headers we will have to put a v-band here on this swage end and then right there on that swage end so but that's it I'm gonna can it so I can record a little bit if I want to but mid 90s here in the shop hopefully the breeze helps i'm gonna get to work all right that wasn't too terribly long maybe 15 20 minutes and we've got the shorty out there it is obviously black painted we have the long tube pace setter and then the silver ceramic coated we have gibson so that's uh that's where she stands now i'll tell you it sure would have been nice to have done this before we had everything reassembled uh, there's where we're at. Gasket fell. Couldn't really film. I didn't really care to, you know, it's sort of a rush deal, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to get the pace setter mocked up. It's probably gonna be easier to come in from the bottom, at least over here. I don't know if the heat shield or the oil filter uh, will be issues, but I'm gonna find out and I'll let you know. Well, hopefully you can see what's going on there. That might be the world's fastest long tube install. I realize it's the passenger side, we shouldn't celebrate because the driver's side will probably be much more difficult. But uh, I just went ahead, I extracted the Gibson from the top and somehow we wedged the passenger side in there. It sort of just fell into place, oil filter stayed on, everything checks out. Uh, all bolts are in, so we've literally got all six bolts. There's like no tomfoolery here. It was effortless. <laughs> and, uh, I will say the issue, you could get the bolt started here. I had to shim. I've got a jack stand and some wood shims down there to hold it up. It's what you have to do in your one-man show. Uh, if you had another guy or a co-worker down there, you know, or sister or whatever, uh, she could press it up while you start the bolts. But uh, what I did work great for being solo and uh, super happy with this. So now, before we can check the fitment of the Y-pipe, we gotta get the driver's side off. So I'm also excited because I realized I have Gatorade out here, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go hungry. All right, so I cleared some space on the card so we can ramble a little bit more. But uh, what I was saying is I had a Gatorade out here that I'd forgotten I brought, so I was excited. It's no longer cold though, so that 100 degree heat kind of kind of takes a toll on that. That said, this is my helping hand. Again, when you work solo, you got to be creative. Three ton jack stand. It is one or two positions from being out of the jack stand. And then I've got some little wood shims. And by gosh, that was just the perfect position. If you go one slot up, it was just caulking the header. Uh, it made it too high on the backside. So this was perfect having those little shims in there and now we will see if we need to replicate this on the driver's side. Alright, so a little update for you. The driver's side definitely not the joy that the passenger side was, but um, nonetheless not too bad up front. Uh, your uh, cylinder one coming down though. <laughs> It gets a little dicey once you get right back in that uh, crevice. So you've got the brake booster, you got the master cylinder, you got uh, vacuum lines, you got heater hoses, you got cooling hoses, you got all kinds of crud to contend with over here. And you may not realize it, but you are looking at something that just worked a miracle for me. So number one, the tool pile has grown. Uh, we got the Knipex out, we got all sorts of trial and error crud. The little Capri breaker bar actually came in handy for the very back bolt uh, from down below the truck. 
I uh, don't know that I mentioned, but we grabbed the Tecton and something else. Tried to use the Harbor Freight pliers wrench. The thing is too heavy and too big for this application. But what we have here is my Stavilla Flex Head. A little, uh, you can barely make out the green right there. And if you were to trace that, you're going to go back there and you, if I can zoom in, are going to see right try to get some light on it for you. Right back there, that thing that looks knurled attached to the body of the ratchet, that is knurled. That's a coking extension. And if we run through the primaries of the headers and we get back in there, that is a 12-point Craftsman socket. So, uh, yeah, we uh, have quite the little setup going here, but that is the last bolt on this side. Uh, header's just going to drop. I think it'll sort of be caught by the extension. And then maybe I can finesse it out. Maybe I'll just let it drop if the heat shield will catch it. And then I'll just extract it from underneath. But anyway, I uh, thought that was a pretty comical little setup. It actually works like, I mean, to be totally straight up with you, like I'm sitting here ratcheting this. I don't want to go anymore because we're about to pull out <laughs> uh, that last bolt there holding the header in place. And I have one hand on a camera. So I'm going to turn this off and uh, get my second hand in place, try to catch the headers and uh, then we will have these suckers out of here oh yeah there the gibsons are got them both off driver's side again definitely more of a pain than the passenger driver's side up top this is a driver's side pace setter long tube we're going to go ahead and throw this thing on again i don't know if it's going to drop in from the top go in from the bottom or what exactly it's way later uh, i was wanting to go in at like 8 30 and eat but uh hey Got to prioritize here. Food can come later. Don't think we'll die. So uh, we're going to put the truck ahead of our own health and self-interest here once again. I will tell you, when I bolted this on, I don't think I've updated you on this front. This long tube header from Paysetter was significantly easier for me to access the bolt. So that's a huge perk. You don't see it near as well as those uh, silver ceramic coated ones. But trust me, she's in there. So... Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shut the door. I keep having this frog come in and then it's a pain in the butt It costs me like 10 minutes every time to get him out of the shop He goes out and comes back in and I have to get a long broom. It's kind of a pain in the butt So it's gonna be about that time my shop lights on outside I'm gonna go ahead and get the door down and that means this turns into a sauna, but hey uh, It'll save me time. So we will see what we can do with the driver's side and then we'll be able to kind of mock this crowd up So I'm gonna get back to work. All right. Well, uh Fate would have it that uh, this is probably the night. <laughs> I say that just because it's late. I've got to eat still, work out, shower, get up, get to work. Uh, I haven't been on like uh, Instagram, you know, in like six days. There's like a bunch of messages. Probably need to check those, things like that. But uh, anyway, this is kind of where we're at. It looks like the starter is going to have to come off. So uh, that's sort of a buzzkill. I was hoping that wouldn't be the case. It looks like it is. So I'll probably extract these, set them off to the side, and then hit this. Uh, hopefully I can get home at a, a decent time tomorrow, you know, not like 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, maybe closer to like 6.30. Uh, that would be beneficial. Once we get this one in, we can sort of mock up the why. If everything is good, I have to take everything back out, which sucks, but I'd rather find out now if there's issues than after we've done something to the headers, gotten them all fixed and dressed up. So uh, that's probably it for the night, but uh, we'll be back. We'll tackle this side, get it in, and uh, see what we can do. So, again, I wish it was like the weekend. I had more time, but again, kind of kind of have to go to work to fund this stuff. So, got to keep the priorities in line. But, uh, yeah, we'll be back. We'll see how this goes, and I will keep you posted. Well, I lied. I, uh, I'm one of those people. Once I start something and it's on a deadline, you know, I just I couldn't go in and eat. You know, I, I decided, well, I'm just going to stay out and get this done. <laughs> and... Uh, so the starter is off again uh got to bust out the door for that five eighths for the bolt for the nut nine sixteenths for the electrical connection uh if it looks like there's blood on the edge of the master cylinder it is as i was trying to shove this thing down uh it just kind of did go <laughs> and uh, busted my hand against it so still a little numb from that one believe it or not but uh, it is there it's not obviously bolted up yet but it is there it's just kept on sliding down so I've got the hardware up here I'm gonna try to get feeling back in my hand and get that thing bolted up so we can mock up the Y
All right, so uh, I think we made pretty good time overall, but I've run into some other issues. They're not related to the headers. Uh, passenger side, it's really hard to tell that it's on, uh, especially when we're used to like the ceramic coated Gibsons, but it is on. Driver's side also is on. I don't know that you can kind of pick it out there. Problem is unforeseen things, and this is exactly why I like to mock things up. So first and foremost, on the driver's side, since this is four-wheel drive, I am uh, kind of worried about the clearance. Now it does clear currently, but there is a counterweight on that drive shaft, and I am quite confident it's going to wind up whacking the collectors every single time it turns which should create some great sound and some uh, quite the vibration and it's conveniently located just about directly underneath the uh, dash in front of the driver so uh, definitely going to be something noticeable uh, over time will the counterweight fly off will it wear a hole in the collector will it just flatten it out and avoid the interference don't know what i'm going to do now is sail under the truck with you and we're going to take a look at it all right <laughs> never the easiest thing to get under here. I have no clue what you're looking at. It should kind of be something of interest. Gotta find my light. There it is. <laughs> okay. So, uh, can we get back far enough where you can appreciate this? Yeah. If this looks tight, this is the, again, the drive shaft. That is the collector. And no, it's technically not touching. But good lord is it close. And then you add in that counterweight right there. I'm pretty sure she's gonna she's gonna make some contact there. So I want to point out though again This is super awkward. You know, I don't have a lift <laughs> So put a giant camera with me black is the header collector shiny is the galvanized swaged Y pipe so the route this thing takes and it also looks like it's going to hit the uh, Transfer case as well <laughs> Is right through there. There was never a routing of the factory exhaust there. Clearly with the long tubes, I guess they kind of have to do something different. It looks like we could clearance that ear off if we have to. Uh, granted, it's going to be a total pain in the butt to get to that. But uh, let's just, I guess, trace this side. My push-off hand got in some transmission fluid. Here is that. Uh, again, it's... I'm here off the ground with a the camera. There's only so much I can do. But yeah, pretty sure that's going to rub. You got to think the truck's not running. It's going to have a little bit of a lope. <laughs> and to then add in the road and the vibration. This backside is probably the ticket. Uh, it's really hard to get the camera there, but you can see what I'm talking about. Maybe I can shave that off and avoid that. I don't really know. We'll have to explore that. This would be a lap joint right here. Uh, again, back of the transfer case. Coming in, this is the Y, so it would kick out right there. There's the factory hanger that we painstakingly took off and maintained. And then coming up, you've got another swage joint. This one's relatively straight, again. Kind of running up that direction. <laughs> then, I don't know if the camera's going to clear. Barely did. Uh, right here, we've got the swage joint. Lapping over the collector. Uh, passenger side header fit pretty good, as far as I can tell. It clears the oil filter, albeit not by much. It looks like it clears the block. Uh, the biggest concern I have is that O2 sensor, because that's going to be really, really close to <laughs> uh, not threading in if you kind of follow the drift there. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, this side here, I do think that we could put a V-band, right? There's no obstruction. That's what I wanted to do. That way the exhaust can just uncouple and come back. Well... Come back with me, if you will, over here. Um, I wish I could see if you're seeing this, but I can't keep the camera in front of me because of space constraints. So I think we're doing okay here. Counterweight is up this direction. You can kind of see it now. That's, again, a clearance issue. The other clearance issue, while this has space, I can get the traffic finger in there. If I were to put a V-band right there, I'd don't think it clears the drive shafts. Um, 
Now that's a problem. I can't like shimmy the pipe with you because if I do, I take the light away and I'm holding the huge camera in the other hand. Yeah, so I'm super, super glad that I went ahead and did this. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what to tell you. Um, I think this is going to hit, but I'm thinking I cannot run a V-band here for sure. Um, yeah, this is... Uh, if you ever had to take the exhaust off, is what I'm trying to contend with here. I want it to be super easy and convenient. Um, I've never actually run on a personal vehicle the lap joint clamps. You know, so I don't know if like in six years I can just roll out here, take them, you know, un loosen them and tap that thing off. Or if it's going to like seal up, I would assume it would seal up, you know, from the carbon and the exhaust. But uh, yeah, uh, relatively quickly here tonight. Again, I didn't stop and eat supper or anything, so that has something to do with it. But... We got this thing, we took the shorties off, if you can see over there. Uh, we put the long tubes on and we mocked up the exhaust. So I'm going to take some pictures, send them to the TIG weld guy. And uh, I don't think he's going to want to put a V-band over there. I mean, I think he would do it, you know, he'd, he'd get paid and do it, I'm sure. But uh, that's just... <laughs> I don't think it's going to fit, so clearly what I'm going to do is I'll kick this exhaust off and I'll slip the V-band over. The V-band may fit, you know, like the flange, it's just I don't know that the coupling will, so I'll be playing with all that off camera. I got to get inside, get a drink, get supper, work out, shower, all that, but I did at least hit a milestone here, so this is the pace setters mocked up. Again, my apologies, you can't see any better with me and the camera, but I mean, you know, there's times like the fitment is like, man, you have pace setters, they've, they've kind of got it going on. And then there's times and you're like, that's not going to clear at all. <laughs> so it's not just because it's tight or close quarters, it's because it's like really, really bad. So, I mean, like right here, you know, yep, it's tight, but I'm not concerned about it. I don't think we're going to, you know, jostle the header around enough to hit the transmission pan. But anyway, it's, uh, I'm trying not to get training fluid on the camera. And uh, I realize you can't see well. I'm losing feeling in my bad thumb. I am uh, going to call it a night. So is this an episode? Is it standalone? Is it tagged on with something? No clue. In case it is standalone and I leave you on a cliff to see what we do, LoneStarMopars.com is the website. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. With that said, thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying the Ram Revival. If you ran pace setter headers, what did you do? Is your truck two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive? What year is your truck? Did you have fitment issues? Did you run V-bands? Did you run the lap joints? Will the lap joints hold? Granted, by the time I read comments from anyone, uh, I will have made my decision and fate will be sealed or leaking. <laughs> One of the two. But uh, yeah, let me know and I will catch you back as we wrap this thing up. So... As always, thanks for watching, and I will catch you for more from the shop. All right, so I uh, came out here without a camera a couple nights ago, got this sort of squared away where I think we're functional. And I'm just going to quickly walk you through it because I've got to get these headers off so I can hopefully get them to the guy to TIG weld. But what we are looking at is the Y pipe. This is our crossover, obviously below the transfer case, comes around the backside. You got to think with the factory and the exhaust manifolds or the shorty headers. Your crossover is way up on the front side of the transfer case, sort of near the transmission pan. So it's a relatively straight shot here on the passenger side. Uh, you're not going to see anything for a little while. <laughs> it's, uh, all this distance, uh, which you're looking at undercarriage of the truck, and I've got so much crud down here I can't do any better than this, but it's a straight shot back. right? That's kind of what I'm getting at. And then if we come over here, Again, one man show, no lift. This is the best I can do. <laughs> we have this vantage point. So that is a lap joint. In my opinion, it needed to have been bent a little differently. Uh, it should have been angled and kicked up more to be an optimal fit. They also don't include any mounting brackets, provisions, anywhere to support this. As you can see, we've got wood underneath it and that's giving us the distance we need because that little tab that you see on the transfer case, I can't point at it, but essentially like the center of the screen, right? You've got dirty with a drain plug, you come up, 
you go on the sidewall and you've got that just ear coming off the top. If you don't have this supported here or somewhere along the way, that is actually going to touch like major. <laughs> and uh, That would create a lot of vibration. Coming up this way, we have the concerning area and I cannot get a good angle on this better than this with myself here, which kind of has to be. This is the intermediate shaft, obviously, you know, front axle to the transfer case. And then we've got the slip fit here. I have gotten this by way of that <laughs> the Dominator and the Harbor Freight one, one of those I could fit too. I have bent, I also did it by hand for a while, but I bent this header out towards the frame rail. So from the drive shaft and transmission pan this way, basically pulled on it, snapped it, creaked it, popped it just enough that I can actually now fit a V-band here. The concerning thing is still the counterweight, which is right there in front of that blue USA portion of the handle. I'm afraid that may hit the collector. Um, that's one of those things I can't really test until we're driving it. I think we can rig up a mount like a tether system to sort of pull the collector. I'm also going to try to bend the collector farther away when this is out of the truck. But basically this sort of updates you. Uh, spend a little bit of time and a lot of manpower kind of bending and tweaking and shimmying things. And I think we've got it functional. So the plan is V-band here. V-band on the driver's side collector. So essentially where you see that swage come to an end, that's where I'm gonna make the cut. If I take you back here, Somewhere in this vicinity, whether it's the skid plate bolt or a fuel line bolt or a new hole or something, we've got to support this to keep it off the transfer case. I'd love to kind of support like the crossover pipe. There's really nowhere good to go aside from the floor pan. And then back here, we're stupid close to the factory mount. I guess if I fit a pipe there, you know, in a muffler or something, we could probably support it from the back side. Up front, I'm gonna try to utilize right up there, you know, your OE cat position. So that's sort of where we stand right now. And uh, like I said, it's uh, got home. I keep getting home eight o'clock or later. We've got game six of the finals tonight. I'd kind of like to watch some of it, at least the end of it, in case it's like the end of the season. <laughs> and, uh, still haven't eaten, but again, priorities. So I'm going to pull all this exhaust off the pipe, and then we're going to start trying to get the headers out. Uh, I think I mentioned it the last time we were out with the camera. I went ahead and pulled the starter, as you can see over there. So yeah, just a lot of prep and fitment and trial and error back here, but it's all coming off. It's going to get TIG welded. Well, it's going to do some other stuff, and then it'll be back. <laughs> Go back home, and uh, we'll take it from there. So with that said, this is kind of a wrap here. Again, I don't know how I'm going to piece these together, but uh, if that's the end, it's the end. Thanks for watching the Ram Revival. If you like the video, leave a like. If you're enjoying the series, I consider uh, would invite you to subscribe. Check out the rest of the series, some of the other... Uh, automotive content tools if that's up your alley but uh, for now I'm gonna get off this creeper and get by a fan and uh, start taking these headers off so I'll catch you in the next segment all right one last thing now that I've got the exhaust off I did want to showcase that the v-band does clear <laughs> so I did a little bit more prying a little more pulling on this thing again the biggest thing if I was like on a lift I think I would be able to get way more power out on this thing, but it is what it is, so we'll see if the counterweight she might be looking at does wind up hitting the collector. It's like the fattest part of the collector, right where the counterweight is. Like if the counterweight was up farther or <laughs> centrally located, or if the shaft is a little bit longer, it wouldn't be an issue at all, but it is what it is, and it's stupid tight, so... Uh, nonetheless, though, I think the V-band should be okay, so that's, that's that. I, I'm going to run up, start trying to get these bolts out of the hitters, and uh, we'll catch you where we pick up next.